Hello everybody, Cone Dodger here. Welcome back to Automation. We are going to jump straight into doing some more fan build competition overviews, taking a look at four more uh, entries, and we are going to start with, let's see, let's start with the Radian, and let's go to the GTL. Okay, so it looks like we got another uniquely colored entry here. Uh, I think I like this one slightly more than the bubblegum, but uh, it's still... Well, let's just say it's a striking color. This entry comes from Jaggernaut. I believe I'm saying that right. I'm not entirely sure. Jaggernaut sent a little blurb with it, and it says, I want to create some sort of Grand Tur Turisme? Turisme, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Grand Turisme lim Limousine. And it'd be more predictable for the driver, and have more comfort. It's not a pure luxury car, but quite expensive in comparison to your creation. So I took your base model and added a turbo to it, in this case, not for gaining additional horsepower, but for torque to make up for the additional weight. Uh, so let's see, let me scroll back up to the radian in my notes. Mine has 202 horsepower, this one has 206, so yes, not a lot more horsepower there. Uh, the 0 to 60 on my base one was 9.1. I believe this one's going to be similar to that, 8.7, so a slight increase. Uh, this does use the four cylinder engine, so. Certainly, oops, that's not what I wanted. Certainly, with the uh, the kind of, I would say it's more towards the the base model than the sport. 38.5 miles per gallon is better than the 31.6 that uh, the original um, base model had. Let's see, drivability 64.2 is higher than the 63 one. Sportiness is down to 22 one from 28. Comfort is up 55. Uh, from 37.9, Prestige is up 22.7 from 17, and Safety significantly up 59.6 from 46.2. So those are the base stats. Let's see the cost. Uh, it is slightly more expensive. Actually, it's quite a bit more expensive. 13.2, and the base radian was at 11.1. Uh, even the Sport was at around 12, so pretty significantly more expensive. Seeing a lot of stagger, we got 215s in the front, 245 in the back. Uh, 245 is quite a bit of tire for 206 horsepower. Uh, let me take a quick look at the engine. It does use a small turbo. And, yeah, it does have a pretty good torque curve, a lot of bottom end to it, so uh, I, could, I can see the, the reasoning behind it for sure. Fuel octane seems like maybe there's a lot left in this engine still, so uh, at a 25.63 economy, that's pretty good, but maybe there was actually a little bit left in this guy, too. Okay, I don't really know what just happened there. I didn't change anything in that engine tab, but uh, it did update the stats slightly. Hopefully it didn't do anything too weird. Uh, I want to look at the base real quick and see what its weight was. 27.68. Uh, so, I think that is even more than the Sport. It was 28, I think? Oh, 29. So it's, it's more than the Sport and uh, didn't get a huge boost in power. Uh, but did use more economy, or did use the turbo to get more economy for kind of keeping the same speed. Um, hmm. This is this is going to be an interesting one. Now, now we're starting in, to get into the to the phase where I'm going to have to start to narrow it down between entries. Uh, so, so this one, who would we be selling this car to? Let's see. So somebody wants a vector product. And they want a sedan, they want it to be low power, high luxury, and uh, pretty economical. So in theory we would be selling this as a package? Probably not. I think this is the case where Jaggernaut would be taking this car, his company would be taking the car uh, in the chassis form with, with the engine and whatnot, and then tuning it and doing their own interior and stuff like that because this car has had a lot of interior work I believe yeah and stuff like that so uh, probably taking this car and reselling it selling it as their own product 
So that's a little bit different than the other ones we've seen. Uh, so that could have a completely different kind of place in the in the scheme of things. There's there's different mentalities here that I'm looking for. So uh, so I can see this. I can uh, I can see its usability. So thank you to Juggernaut, Juggernaut, Joggernaut. I don't know. Whatever your name is, thanks for your entry, and good luck. Up next, we're going to have just Jag, and he's got a blurb to go with his as well. This is going to be the Ultra Lux version of the car. We understand the buyer of a vehicle at such a caliber as this does not want to be part of the driving experience. So in addition to all the padding we added to the body to dampen all the road noise, engineers fitted ultra-quiet mufflers to the engine to uh, improve their its isolation from the rest of the world. Sportiness was an afterthought, and we at Valenti Motorworks, I believe I'm saying that right, believe that is that it has just enough performance to get them where they need to go. Our top priorities are comfort and prestige, so in order to do this, we go to the interior, designed a bespoke handcrafted interior from the finest materials, and only the finest backsides, or sorry, that only the finest backsides will accept. We know they don't want to get out and ask for directions from unfortunate peasants, as it would disturb their enjoyment of the delightful sounds of a classic FM. So a high-end sat-nav system was installed to keep them rolling contently along with 21 speakers tuned individually for each sound in a symphony. Wow, this is, uh, so this is apparently the Rolls-Royce of the Kaysen. And, uh, let's see, does it have the price tag to go with it? I'm guessing probably so. $34,794 to produce. Schnikes. 550 horsepower, so it does have a little bit of a uh, improvement over our version. I did notice it was rear-wheel drive, uh, so that's a little bit interesting. And it looks like... Case and case and case and... Drivability is up about 10. Sportiness is cut in half. Comfort is up to 65 from 40. Uh, prestige is at 47, 4 from 32. Prestige at 47 is a big one. That is a hard number to attain. Uh, safety stays about the same. So this car is all about comfort and all about drivability. And yeah, looks like it's doing quite well at that. Uh, 16 miles per gallon. That's okay for... Uh, the kind of car it is, and it's really not that far off from what the, the regular casing has. Uh, so this is kind of one of the things I uh, somewhat expected to see. I expected people to kind of take this route, the Ultra Luxury, and that's exactly what this car is named, the Ultra Lux. Uh, and uh, that is certainly something, as a company, we would definitely want to look for, because Vector does not have any kind of super luxury mentality at all. That's not what we're in the game for. Uh, but there is the possibility that there's people shopping for cars, they're shopping for a new luxury car, and uh, they maybe do want a Vector, but we aren't going to offer anything like that. So uh, we could say, sure, we'll sell you this case and, and we'll send it off to Valenti Motorworks, uh, and they're going to make it into a Rolls Royce for probably, you know, half the cost. And you're still going to get some pretty good performance out of this thing, too. 5.3, 0 to 60, uh, 13, 6 quarter mile, 182 mile per hour top speed. That's all helping with your prestige. Uh, you know, you're never probably going to use it as a super luxury car, but you just need to be able to rub it in people's noses that you can. That's, that's what this is all about. All right, so that is the Ultra Lux. Very nice entry there, Jag. Thank you for the submission, and good luck in the contest. Next up, we're going to have another Kaysen, and this time in the Luxury GT category. This one's staying all-wheel drive. And this is from Dakota, or Spectre Motors. And let's see, let's start with the trim. Try and get a base idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, oh, interesting, it's comparing to the last car. Usually it does not do that. I hope I didn't just screw this up. Let me reload it and make sure... Yeah, it looks like everything's okay. Uh, drivability is at 60. Uh, let's just kind of look at it. So drivability is up. Sportiness is indeed up. So uh, when he says luxury GT, he does definitely means it. Comfort is slightly up. So there's the luxury part. 
Uh, prestige is up as well. And safety again the same. This time the cost is lower. Uh, it's still a lot higher than our car. So 22,000 versus our 15,000 to produce. And economy stays virtually the same. Wonder, let me go back to the blurb. Dakota says, Spectre Motors is known for performance, comfort, and having very powerful engines. I'm pretty sure that's, that's performance. But Spectre Motors turned the dial up even more for our company's Banshee division. The Banshee division of Spectre Motors is all about getting more power of the engine for high performance and racing cars. As a result of the Banshee division, can make, oh sorry, as a result, Banshee Division can make an impressive car even more impressive. When our friends over, ooh, we're friends. When our friends at Vector Automotive said they were going to hold a competition to see who could make their newest lineup tuned even better, we jumped immediately to this very interesting casein. We received the vehicle and immediately saw a lot of potential in this wagon. And our first thought was for our Banshee division to make it a lot faster and add a few more interesting bits to it. So it sounds like um, it sounds like Spectre Motors here took our car and said, "Hey, let's have some fun with this thing," which is cool. Uh, the luxury GT name kind of didn't imply that, but I am seeing that it certainly shows in the sportiness. Uh, let's go to the test track stats. Five point three. Uh, it's actually a little bit slower to 60. Hmm. That's that's interesting. It's very heavy. 4,300 pounds. Let me see. What is my sport wagon version? That is one thing I did not write down into my notes. The notes? 4,000. So it gained what? Um, well, I guess we're about to see. I think it will compare now. No, I didn't compare, but still, it gains about 300 pounds. That's a hefty sum there. Uh, so, understandable that it does lose a little bit of 0 to 60. Uh, it did gain a lot of interior stuff with the luxury interior, luxury sat-nav, uh, launch control. Uh, so, so this is kind of another approach of luxury, doing a luxury package for the car. Uh, but adding in some performance, I didn't see necessarily what was done to the engine. Uh, looks like, looks like just a tune, maybe on some more fuel and a different intake. Uh, just, just kind of tweaking it out, trying to give it that little bit more of a uh, of an edge. Still using a very high-strung kind of power band. So this is probably more in line with something we would sell in-house. Uh, we would send it off to, off to them and have them you know, tune it to their desire, and if we get a customer that wants a car like this, then we would sell it, uh, you know, kind of off of our dealerships in our lots and not, so. Uh, it's like I said, a little bit of a different approach. There's two different kind of mentalities here. So that's where I think this one would fall in line. So thank you for your entry, Dakota, and good luck in the competition. Next up, we have a familiar name, and that is Jackson, who made in the last competition, the Buxton Flyer, which made it all the way through to the finals, so uh, we know we know Jackson knows how to make a car. But what did he do to the Vextron here? This is the Buxton 800, and he says, The Vector Vextron Buxton is a Vector Vextron with a turbocharged 4.6 liter V8. The engine was made by Buxton and produces 850 horsepower, an upgrade from the Vector but still packs the features of the Vector Vectron. So, uh, this is a different approach. Once again, this is, uh, you know, I originally said, you know, I gave a couple of different uh, companies that that does tuning to cars and does packages like this. Uh, this falls pretty much in line with the with the Hennessy Hennessy kind of heritage. They took this car, they threw a big engine in it. Well, not necessarily big in displacement, but you know a super high horsepower engine in it and turned it into a supercar. So let's see what kind of stats the thing has. 4.8 to 60, 12 3 quarter mile, 230 mile per hour top speed. Uh, that's that's an interesting stat there because I remember growing up, you know, you always see those those Hennessy Venoms and that was always the thing. That was always their claim to fame is a super high top speed. Because I could never get them to hook up to do a zero to sixty. <laughs> it just, it just wasn't gonna happen. 
Uh, so, certainly going along with that, 230 mile per hour top speed, that is no joke. That is no joke. Um, the cost is 20,800. What is that versus our regular one? Oh, wait, I didn't have to do that. I already had it written down. The original one, let me go back to his, was 14,439. So this one... Looks like it's about a $6,000 package to give you, you know, 850 horsepower to basically double your horsepower. Uh, let's take a look at this engine. Nice. Oh, individual throttle body, direct fuel injection, twin turbo, looks like a large exhaust system. <laughs> um, this is a little bit too strange modeling right here. <laughs> I guess it's a single, a single exit exhaust with massive, yeah, 5 inch piping. So, so it's feeding like a couple two and a half inch pipes into this gigantic five inch catalytic converter. Uh, it's very cartoonish looking, I like it. <laughs> uh, very funny. Uh, so 859 horsepower, it's all at the top end. This is a race engine, this is something, um, this is a package you would buy to say, look how fast my car is. That's, that's the purpose of this package. And I can appreciate that. It it uh, it certainly serves a purpose. <laughs> and it's funny that your your last entry to the last competition was called the Buxton Flyer. Uh, I think the Flyer mentality would definitely go with this guy too. Uh, and just a brief rundown of this the um, the stats. Thirty one drivability is definitely down from forty six. No surprise there. Fifty seven eight sportiness is up, not dramatically so. Uh, and the other one's comfort's actually up. That's that's pretty surprising. <laughs> uh, prestige is up from the power and stuff. Uh, safety is about the same too. So this one, yeah, it's all about going fast. But you know what? For having 859 horsepower, thanks to the way the turbos are modeled, still 19.8 miles per gallon. You can still drive this car. You know, if you didn't actually ever hit boost, you could probably drive it pretty nicely around town. Um, I'm sure he's wishing I had more fender flares in the back. Don't worry, next competition you'll be able to do that. Uh, but for this time, you're stuck with those 275s. So any more power probably would have been a waste. Actually, it's probably... Just, just real quick. Kind of take a peek at this. Um, where would I find that? Wheel spin. Oh, it's only 3.9. That's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Alright, good luck to you and everybody else that uh, we reviewed today. Looks like I have about five more entries to review as of right now, so hopefully I'll be able to do that for either Friday or Saturday. I've got a pretty busy week trying to get uh, everything set up for autocross this weekend. You can probably hear my voice. I'm sounding a little tired. It is like midnight, and I've been working all day, so uh, just trying to get these uh, overviews done so we can uh, move on through the through the contest, through the competition here, and hopefully early next week we will narrow this down to some winners and uh, go ahead and do the uh, the drawing, the random drawing for the t-shirts. So, look forward to that. <laughs>